In a face-to-face -face discussion activity, we can guide the conversation as it happens. It's a time-honored tradition to say things like, going back to Dwayne's point, or Yasmin, can you talk a little bit more about what you were saying? Or even, I think Quinn has a great point. Would anyone like to add to it? That's our role in the conversations, to guide and to prompt. In online discussions, though, the lack of real-time presence makes that more challenging in the moment. We're not immediately there to guide the conversation, and not everyone is even participating in the same exact thread. Dwayne may have already read Quinn's response and is replying instead to Sharon by the time that we as the teacher see and promote Yasmin's great answer. We can't step in as easily in the moment, so those efforts have to shift into other places. When this doesn't happen, we get the dreaded response that you've probably seen before. We caution students against it in our instructions. Your comments cannot just be that so-and-so's post was great and you agree. You have to say why and advance the conversation or some variant of those instructions. When was the last time in a face-to-face -face discussion session that you had to tell Yasmin, for example, that she couldn't just agree with Sharon? She had to add something to it. It's an occurrence almost totally exclusive to the online discussion forum, and it's what students turn to when they just can't think of anything else to say. The last lecture discussion video mentioned perfunctory discussions, where students are contributing because they have to, not because they want to. These answers are encouraged by years of those standard discussion board instructions that counsel against them. When all we ask students to do is respond, but we don't tell them how, we're not giving them any parameters that can be useful. I think a great example for me is, think of the first time you went into what is now your favorite dessert shop, saw the long list of amazing flavors, and couldn't decide which one to order. I have this moment in salt and straw at least once a month, by the way. We turn to old standards there, usually chocolate or vanilla, or I think this post was great. And in online discussions, that means, yeah, saying we agree. If we're careful, we'll pad that agreement by restating their argument, which isn't adding to the conversation, but makes our answer look longer, and longer answers usually get more credit. So don't just tell students to avoid these answers. Give them a framework for doing so by guiding their responses in some way. Don't just tell them to talk to each other. Tell them what to talk to each other about.